Shalom. Oh, can you hear me well? We can stand, I can like remain sitting. I don't know what else. We have more participating uh, today. I'm sorry that we didn't have enough lunches, but at least we had enough water. <laughs> that what it would do. It's uh, always difficult to, to predict how many people are coming, although something was telling us that we are going to have more. But, uh, well, I had probably a little bit too, too little taste. Otherwise, I would count with more coming. Anyway, thank you for coming to uh, discuss this uh, very dramatic, I would say, uh, subject for today. And uh, I hope that you understand uh, that it relates to all of us. It's not just somewhere there in Israel, but it's also worldwide and it's in the United States. As, uh, and it concerns Jewish people, but it will also concern Christians. I mean, all Christians. Today on the news, I read something uh, what the Erdogan, the president, uh, the prime minister of Turkey said. And he said that we start with Jews, but Christians will follow. His message at the 100 years anniversary of uh, modern Turkey was shocking because he was speaking like the language of war between Islam and the rest of the world, Jews and Christians. Uh, also shocking is that Turkey is a member of NATO and it's the second largest army in the NATO. I'm not saying that it's the strongest, but it's just like sort of, it used to be considered like Western in the Middle East, so to speak. So, to speak. so they, they would consider it as an alliance. So now it's getting really dangerous. Over the weekend, we heard of the pogroms in Russia. We can say it's like Muslim part of Russia. And still, we haven't heard of the pogroms done by a mob in Russia since 100 years or more. Right. What's a pogrom? Pogrom, you know what is pogrom, you ask for others, that's smart. <laughs> but thank you for asking. Uh, pogrom is when uh, uh, like organized or not organized mob is, go is uh, coming to uh, uh, harm Jewish people. Pogrom is uh, something like mob event. It's not like somebody, uh, Beats a Jewish person, like one on one or like a small group. It's when a uh, uh, pogrom, uh, pogrom it's, uh, it's coming from the, like, it's, uh, I would say, Slavic word that is related of destroying something uh, or ruin something. So the, uh, the mob in uh, Dagestan, they, in, uh, it's like a republic in Russia, autonomous, sort of like autonom autonomous. Republic, they uh, the mob came uh, to the airport to uh, size the the airplane that came from Israel with refugees. At the same uh, similar time, somewhere else, uh, the mob was trying to uh, come into the hotel with uh, people from Israel staying in. The most hilarious or bad even in all this story is that the Russian government, including Putin, blames United States for this. So they say that it was organized by the Western countries, by the enemies of Russia. So just for me as for a Jewish uh, person, it says they can kill us and blame United States for that. Mm. It's not new in the history. But it's it's threatening. It's uh, it's freaking. 
And uh, the war is in Israel, but the consequences is everywhere. And unfortunately, and unavoidable, we're going to feel the consequences of that everywhere in the world. The Jewish community is, is so in such distress these days, worldwide. So much of fear, so much of anger, I haven't seen in my life ever. What we experience right now, be it in the Middle East or worldwide, it's getting an apocalyptic scope, apocalyptic size. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not like, I'm not trying to scare you. Mm -hmm. Seriously, and I'm not, uh, those who know me, you know that I'm not like speculating about end times. Even now, I'm not going to speculate when the rapture is going to take place, maybe tonight, I don't know, on the part of here on the lawn. Uh, would be nice. But what we experience at the moment, what we see on the news, and what we experience even in our lives as Jewish people, but also other people involved, it's, it's apocalyptic in a in the outcome, so, in the, so to speak. That's why I thank you for your interest of coming today. I know that you uh, you have had many other nice opportunities for lunch and for uh, fellowship, but thank you for coming. And we're going to build this as a discussion, as we usually do with eat and talk discussions or with brown bags. I would moderate it, but I would love you to speak up and to uh, say your view on what's going on and what Jesus would do. We are not going to politicize that. I'm not, uh, I try to stay away from political discussion. I won't even uh, stay away who is from, from the things like whom the land belong to, who has right to live where? I I don't want to speak about Israel and Palestine, about different ways of solutions to state or no state. I don't know. Just I'm not I'm I'm using I'm saying that just to make my point. We're not going to talk politics today. We're going to talk Yeshua, Jesus, what he would do, how he reacts, how he would. We are, and, uh, and what the Bible and our Messiah Yeshua tells us in relationship to uh, uh, what's going on, how we should feel, how we should react, how what is expected of us in, in this uh, moment. So, in your uh, in your dis in our discussion, please stay away from political uh, side of it, okay? Because it's not the way we are going to solve this right now. We are we're inviting now the Holy Spirit to guide and lead us in this discussion. And let me pray. But you know, our Father, we're grateful for your presence here with us and your presence in our life. We're grateful for your presence in history and for the fact that you are making the history. That you are the God who rules this world and never distant himself from our lives and from what's going on. We invite you to uh, be part of this discussion. We invite your spirit to work in our hearts and our minds. We invite you to give us wisdom, guidance, courage, encouragement, right words, mm -hmm right motives, right desires. We want to get closer to you and in you we will find not just refuge in your, in you we will find our victory. And in the name of the one who conquered the death, and here, who died for our sin and rose from the dead, 
In the name of the Messiah of Israel and Savior of the world, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Well, on October 7th, it all started. We celebrated Simchat Torah, even at our congregation in Berlin. We were in distress immediately. And still, it's the day when we dance with the Torah. It's a very important Jewish holiday. We rejoice that God gave us his revelation and his guidance in the Torah, what is usually translated in Christianity as the law in, in English. And I said that let us dance regardless, because by dancing with the Torah and rejoicing in the Lord, we will have our victory also. So let's conquer the fear by praising him. I didn't know how it's oh, going to turn out. And also, on October 8th, I should fly to Israel. My flight was canceled. I was so upset. I tried to fly the next day. My flight was canceled. And I got the message that God was trying to tell me. My desire was to be in Israel and to minister to people there. But his message to me was, I want you to stay and to be in the diaspora. And I quickly realized why. Because the Jewish community is in danger. Jewish people are in danger, even in Germany. What was your reaction as it all happened? After October 7th, on October 7th and then the following week, let's say, how, what, what did you say? What did you feel? How did you... How did you relate to that? Please talk to me. What spiritual experience you had in this regard? So how, what did you think of God in all this? Um, it's, uh, the camera, camera is on me. My name is, uh, everybody knows, but it's recorded, but without your face and without your name. So speak up. It's another for you in this in this room. One line, it's different. I uh, received a text from a friend early in the morning that said Israel is at war, and immediately I went to the sources that I had to find out what was going on. So that's and just began to weep, and I went and brought, showed this to my husband. And he tried to, to comfort me and say, this happens a lot. This is fine. This is going to be okay. And I said, no, no, no. This feels different. This just feels different. And um, I can still hardly talk about it. Thank you. My immediate response was from Amos. And Amos chapter 3, I can do prayer of Amos. Like, Lord, make this more. And there's a big Lord sustain me, like sustain me through it. And that is it in my heart. That word came, Lord, take a place more. That's all I, I could think of. And when um, praying, still praying. That's it. Thank you. For me, it was uh, what else is new? You know, that there's been fighting since the beginning of time. There'll be fighting literally at the end of time. So it was, for me, it's <clears throat> what, what can I do? How can I, how can I wrestle through, you know, my own kind of just like, I don't know if apathy is like the right word, but, um, you know, what, what really 
you know, other than prayer, which, you know, is always the right answer, but what, you know, what, what can I do? What, what, what would, what would that even, you know, make a, make a difference personally? Like, is this, is this anything new? Thank you. Okay. It brought up lots of memories I've had with lots of Christian brothers and sisters who don't see Israel as having a part in God's plan anymore. It just made me angry. It reminded me of lots of conversations or even conferences I've been to where it's been focused on Jewish missions and Christians will brush it off and say, ah, oh, why are we focusing on this? Like, can't you see? Look around. Satan hates the Jews. And he has his partner on the back for a reason. Thank you. Where? Uh, I actually thought of an email that you had sent a year or more ago that I've kept in my inbox for the for the line pray that God spares lives in Ukraine you sent an email that had that line in it and I was like I need to keep this email and pray for God to spare lives in Ukraine so every time I look at my inbox I see it and that was one of my more immediate reactions pray that God spares lives in the Middle East because that's what he's doing right now for us thank you I think it was just, it was kind of like a slow realization of what was going on. Because at first it was, you know, rockets and that's me. Um, but then you read the accounts of Hamas in Israel. They're not just firing rockets, they're actually in Israel, uh, killing people and then torturing people. And, you know, I think of, it was unexpected uh, for Hamas to have that kind of um, reach within Israel. We would have expected that from like the um, animation. And also, it just every attack on Israel, it seems, is an attack on the existence of the Jewish state. And uh, I almost forgot until actually Biden reminded uh, me, which is that Israel is the sole guarantor of the Jewish people. Um, really God, but, uh, you know, and my mind goes to, this isn't just the state of Israel, this is Jewish people like me, all over the world, and as we've seen in the news, anti-Semitism has dramatically increased. It's up 400% in the U.S., 1,000% uh, in the U.K. There are 48 anti-Semitic incidents on college campuses in just three days in the U.S. And so I, I felt a lot of despair at first because it, it's just the, you know, the realization that this is, this is about Jewish people. It's not just the political state mm -hmm. of Israel. And then I read... Um, what I found encouraging was the many passages of scripture like Daniel 9, 10, 12, 2, that talk about God's God's victory in me. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, when this happened, uh, I could uh, understand it because uh, being from a country where it was a majority and listening to it all the time about hatred against Jews. <clears throat> Although uh, hatred uh, also exists against Christians, but because Christians, uh, Christians it is a little less. Um, but what happened, uh, uh, there was a, uh, because the uh, United States, which is considered as a Christian country, it, uh, it, it supported Israel, so there was a fear that it, it would be attacked in Pakistan. <clears throat> Although the church uh, was recently attacked and there was a humongous persecution. And but one thing that uh, really astounded me, shocked me, was a call to get united with Palestine in Pakistan. And I think, in, and then wouldn't we 
entire Muslim world to check where they go with the support. I was listening to a discussion show and uh, and uh, uh, one of the movies quietly uh, uh, a representative a representative from the most political popular political party was in the last conference call I thought what is happening in Israel. And he quoted the verse uh, from uh, from Quran. Can I say these things? I think this is not political. This is this is theoretical. So he quoted a verse from I think this is a surah called Surah Al Maida, and he said, uh, uh, "You cannot be friends with uh, Jews and the Sar. You can do business with them. You can go to West um, and do business, but you cannot be friends with them." And Sar means Christians. So, so that was very discouraging and uh, and uh, painful. Um, and I think this is because of the, this is not because of a, um, because of uh, a dispute on a territory. This is something, this is uh, a foundation of, of the faith that provokes them to and uh, has created such uh, hatred. My, I have a question, the reason why I came, that being Christian, when we, um, when we are taught to study, there is a colossal amount of education, Christian education teaching from the scripture is how to respond to the enemy. My question is that how could we comprehend the way the response to uh, response to the powers in Palestine, right? Although, uh, you know, this is uh, this uh, um, this understanding is uh, spreading. I uh, was recently listening to the interview uh, of uh, Musab Hassan, so I, I should not put the name. So he made it very clear, although Palestinians that that uh, uh, Hamas should be eradicated. So how does it make sense? So Christians are confused. It's not only me in the US all around the world. Christians are confused. How should how should it could happen? That's uh, that's what we're trying to discuss. But first, that and that's why I ask to tell how you feel about that because we need. Uh, it's like. I want to understand, and I want us to understand where we stand on this. Uh, now it was emotional, like it was emotional, and it's good. To share emotions is uh, is important. So uh, share yours, and then we will come to some questions that I have for you. Thank you. I think that um, by no means do I ever want to sound ignorant, but I feel like for a person who just, I feel so confused. I think I feel confused because I. a lot of times we're getting news. It's hard to find out what news is correct, mm -hmm. especially in our current climate when it comes to a lot of people are getting their news from social media. There's a, lots of, a lot of things that are being shared. And especially when you have friends that are from different countries that might associate with the different sides, political sides, if you will, and they're sharing different stuff. And there's so many things that have been happening since 2020 and obviously before that, that it's kind of easy to just be like, similar to what the gentleman shared, like, oh, this is another thing. And obviously by no means am I saying that about a serious issue, but it's, it's hard to, for me personally, it's hard to comprehend and to understand what exactly is happening. And to Hanan's point, like where we should be standing in the middle of this. But I think the Lord is just reminding me that I have such a great resource, um, wealth of resources and individuals who actually have like boots on the ground, simple, like you, people who could educate us and tell us their specific story as opposed to us like say, hey, let me go to social media and get all my information and then find out where I stand. Right. Um, actually talking to people and being in prayer, but also going to, hopefully newsworthy like uh, sources that can actually tell what, us. What do truth. you, also thank you everybody. You do, 
I appreciate what was said. I might, I, I don't consider that in terms agree or disagree. I expected you to say what you feel, and I'm not going to comment on feelings. What do we feel? What do we feel when we read the news on social media or like general, whatever, both sides news? What do we feel usually? I would name some and you maybe add something to this list. <laughs> anger. Much anger. Yeah. Second, fear. Much fear. Sorrow. Right? What else? Frustration. Frustration. Confusion. Confusion. Conflict. Sadness. Sadness. <clears throat> Disbelief. It's it's a full package of negative. So, doesn't matter what side we uh, or just what presentation we uh, we read. It just puts us down. <clears throat> and there are many reasons to to be emotionally down because of that. Because it's a tragedy. It's a cat catastrophe for all people involved. And we immediately deal with the problem of evil, or the challenge of evil. And we need to, to name it, and we need to identify the enemy. Who is the enemy? Satan. Who? Satan. Satan. The one who tries to kill. Who tries, to, uh, who tries to kill the Jewish people, but not only. It's in his desire, because he's a killer of man, it's his desire to kill people in the Middle East. Palestinians, Syrians, Iranians, Iraqis. Oh, it's usually like everything in the Bible and God's plan, it starts with Jewish people. Kill the Jews and then kill everybody. Or just do it uh, do it simultaneously. By the way, according to the Bible, and Jesus knew that, and the, uh, and the Torah is clear uh, on that. Harm Jewish people and you will be harmed. Any type of anti-Semitism, it's like uh, a bullet that shoots you back. So by harming Jewish people, you harm your, uh, yourself. It's clear. Then doesn't Satan know that? He tries to destroy all, uh, all involved. So that's uh, that's the ultimate evil. I want us to to understand. To understand. It's the Satan is the first to blame. At the same time, those who are instruments of his evil. They should be also named. Maybe they don't know what they do, but they're doing evil things. I'm not, I don't want to. Is there a, in Europe, it's, this word is uh, not, not often used, relativate <laughs> things like, for example, uh, sorry? Generalize or relativize? Uh, relativize in, in the sense that, okay, it's uh, it has its cause. So I know if somebody is killed <laughs> brutally, or some somebody is harmed, I'm not going to say, oh, he deserves that. It's not how Jesus sees that. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with me? Yeah. Jesus is not giving like uh, Jesus. Is not blaming somebody. So, for example, ah, you, you are Jewish people. You are sinful. That's why uh, you deserve that. Oh, you did that. Or the... he weeps. For Jesus, it's painful to see what is going on there. October seventh was uh, painful for him, and what's going on now is also. It caused him pain. Would you agree with me on that? So it was a tragedy. And it's tragedy what's going on there. To murder Israelis and those involved from other countries, also Americans, Germans, and from other 
from other countries on October 7, it was evil, clearly evil, and it doesn't allow any rational explanation. Those who try, those who support the Palestinian cause, they must admit that it's evil because it is evil. I hope everybody would agree with me on that. What Hamas did is evil. But our ultimate enemy is not even the Hamas. Another challenge, the challenge of anger. Anger is in many cases also a sign of hopeless, like of weakness. I, I mean, we we feel like hopeless. Mm -hmm. We feel fear, and it pro produces anger in, uh, in us. For example, on October seven, I was shocked by the fact that uh, the terrorists could kill Jewish people for hours and the military was not there. It sounded so irrational, so unexpected, that even today many think that it was a conspiracy. Fear and anger. What would Jesus do with this challenge? The challenge of anger. Is it okay to be angry? I think so. Jesus was angry sometimes. Read the Psalms. God inspired word, uh, word of God, uh, his work, where David is speaking of his anger. Getting angry is normal. What we do with this anger? That's a challenge, and that's uh, that's already some decision to, to make. But to get angry is normal. Human belongs to who we are. Our Messiah Yeshua could demonstrate that himself. Would you agree on that? How would you comment on that? Just briefly, in in a couple of words. Um, I think like we have this emotion of anger um, because sometimes it's used in being very um, just non-confrontational or very, you know what I mean, level. And sometimes it takes that anger to propel you to action, but hopefully you'll choose, like you're saying, the right um, But in anger, a deep, deep anger can actually you know, uh, carry you for through, you know what I mean? A lot of obstacles to do the right thing if you right. choose the right thing. Right. So that we need to, it's important to admit that if we're angry, it's important to admit and accept it in ourselves. That's, that's okay. But it leads to something, uh, what is next? A challenge of retaliation. How our anger is coming out. What does our anger produce? What would Jesus do? What would Yeshua do in this regard? I reminded of uh, the sermon, so called Sermon on the Mount. Turn the other cheek. Forgive. Not necessarily forget. He is not asking us for supernatural. Although to forgive is already like uh, supernatural. So retaliation is in the Torah, but not necessarily in the in the kingdom of our Messiah. Uh, there, uh, there was one Israeli German young woman that was killed. 
yesterday I read on the news from uh, Kevin said we are not we don't have like the the feeling of anger and desire to retaliate will not bring our daughter back. Mm -hmm. And they are not believers. But still, there is there is a feeling of uh, something embedded in the culture, even in like Jewish Christian values. Would you agree with me that Yeshua would oppose retaliation? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bible says the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And I think that our anger is something we need to take to God. And I'm seeing your Sermon on the Mount as well. And, you know, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. But God is the one who will fill them. And I think that when we let anger, my reaction when I see these things and when I see, you know, Palestinians dying as well, is sorrow and prayer for people's hearts because so many on both sides of the ideology, whether here or there, will their heart will be hard yeah. towards each other and the hatred will grow in their heart because of that. And they will not turn to God and all that they will produce for either side will be evil because it is not from God. Well, it's not just not from God. Is from the same. I I am emphasizing that we just like not have something. What is not from God is not necessarily evil. It's not good, ultimately good, but it's not necessarily evil. We deal with the evil here. So and I I I emphasize we need to name things by by their names. God does say vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Yeah, it belongs to him. He, he will make things right. He will. It's we will get there in a minute. But the retaliation or the challenge of retaliation follows by another challenge. If we are not to retaliate, how about the challenge of defense? Uh, yeah, I think you could bring I was thinking of the exact same verse that Nicole quoted. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of my personhood, I think the thing to do with the anger is just give it right up. Like Ephesians 4.29 maybe is more like don't let the sun make any progress in the sky. <laughs> uh, that's my thought about the Greek in that verse. But in terms of defense, like I think there we need to kind of go to Romans 13 and say, what is Paul telling us about our relationship with secular authorities? And I think I was, was raised somewhat never so pacifist. And so I struggled with that. Um, and I even put conscientious objector on my SSS card when I was 18. But I think, um, I, what I kind of landed on is like that it's okay for Christians to join the military and fight and shoot um, if they're being recruited by secular authorities. Yeah, and let me let me take from you take from there. Okay, cool. When we read the Sermon on the Mount about like turning another cheek, don't retaliate. It's about when it concerns you personally. Mm -hmm. It's about retaliation. But to save life is extremely important. The defense is necessary. Yeah. Yeshua himself said that it's more important to save life, even on Shabbat, on every, uh, on every day. Now, I not, again, I don't want to be political, but I want to use it as an example. Now, many countries accuse Israel of being too harsh in the reaction. When I see that, I see such a tremendous hypocrisy. Because those countries like Russia, 
destroyed the whole republics as they rebelled. Turkey still kills uh, Kurds uh, that they consider to be a, a terrorist. Like every, like China, big deal with, with everybody who tries to, uh, to go ahead. The, uh, just look at the reaction of United States after 9-11. Every country would do, uh, would do that. But Israel is a different story. And again, I don't, I don't want to go pol uh, politically now. I just want to emphasize some hypocrisy that is, uh, that is there. Just follow what you are saying. But saving of life is, is important. My, the problem is that those who say that stop the war, they don't offer any solution. My question is, what should Israel do then in this situation? Just suggest something different. What we have not tried before, blockading Gaza like 17 years ago, or, uh, or just uh, uh, trying to uh, have two states in previous, in previous in years. So on both sides, so there, was, there were attempts. And also with, uh, with involvement of other countries, just suggest something else. If out of nothing, there was such a brutality that came, mm -hmm. what would you do? What would you suggest? How to deal, not for the nation, but like protection of your people, defense against this. These people. Now there is an outcry that civilians are dying, and that's tragedy. Listen, I feel, and I'm, I'm honest, I feel so sorry for the Palestinians who, who suffer there. I just, I, I almost cry when I see this, uh, these pictures or this, this news. <clears throat> but who am I to raise my voice? If all other countries, when they protect themselves, they don't count the civilians that they and that are uh, uh, dying in this situation. Just we need to be sort of uh, sort of cons consistent in uh, how we how we behave. They voted in that leadership. Well, not necessary. I don't know who vote for who. It's it's not a democracy there. What what? Who votes for what? It's just like they, it's so. There is no democracy in, uh, in of U.S. understanding in the Middle East. It's not the guilt of the people. It's just somebody sized the power. That's it, and holds to this power. It's not expression of the will of the people. But people are getting indoctrinated. That's another story. People grow up with hatred, and I would say, and I like. Jewish people, as a Jew, maybe I'm say, speaking like insane, but I'm speaking like the Messiah would say. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know any better. They was they they are raised this way. They don't know what the Messiah and Savior has said. In a certain way, we probably need to have some compassion with that. And that leads to the next challenge, the challenge of prayer. And that's probably the most, the major thing that we can do. Besides getting sorry, frustrated, uh, uh, confused, uh, angry of, by looking at the news. Let me give you, by the way, it's, uh, I'm not talking now theology, okay? Don't, don't judge me on theology. But I was in uh, Brazil at the Conference of Latin Evangelical Alliance last week. And at the end of the conference on Thursday night, they were doing uh, like Lord's Supper, or communion. And I'm not, I'm reluctant of taking part in the communion because in, I do it for Passover, Seder, but I do it sometimes. But before that, I was reading on the news something that made me so sorry and so angry, so frustrated just description of our uh, horrible things that were done uh, there, uh, there in Israel. And then I just like, I was almost in tears. And then I said, 
I need to take part in this communion. And not just for my own sake. Jesus died for the Jewish people. And if I'm sore right now, I will take this communion for, for my people. Whatever it means, whatever it will, whatever consequences it should it should make. And don't, please don't judge me on, in terms of systematic theology or how or theology or, or uh, soteriology, whatever way. I'm not talking of just taking the community I'm saving them. No. They're not, it's not what I mean. But I said, Jesus, Yeshua, I want to invite you by that into my people into this situation. Your blood is sufficient, actually, to solve all these problems, to solve all these tragedies. Just come. Be, uh, be, be, with, uh, be in, uh, in this. Now, how should we pray for, uh, for this situation? For the peace in Jerusalem. That's, uh, that's the Bible. To spare, uh, to spare the lives, so the Jewish lives and everybody involved. We pray to God that especially for believers who are there on either side, that He would work through them, bring people to salvation. Um, that stories in the news would come of either side, people helping each other, whether Jew or Palestinian. That these sort of things would rise to the front to soften people's hearts. Okay. And for the outpour of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. For the people to recognizing Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. The only one who can bring this peace. I pray for, the, and immediately I started praying for God's miraculous intervention. Yeah. We need God as probably never before because all political and military attempts failed in the past. From all sides. We need God we need Yeshua to get personally involved by his intervention. We need miracles. At DTS, we believe in miracles. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Theologically, we do. So we need miracles. We need God to intervene. And now a little bit more challenging. How should we pray for Hamas? How should we pray in, the, in this in this situation? And let me, because we have only three minutes left. I need. I, I will tell. Uh, I will tell how I pray for them. Okay. What I said in my in my uh, at my congregation and also in my uh, in public video that I did uh, in the, in this regard, I uh, I said that with very heavy heart. So I hate this. I don't want to do that. But I know that our Messiah said, pray for those who harm you. It's there in the Sermon on the Mount. Bless those who curse you. I don't want to do that. Seriously. I'm honest with you. But I should follow the example of my Messiah. If I want that or not. And also it's written, give the judgment to God. He will do. So God, judge them or show them your grace. Ah, what are you saying? I prefer judgment. But I'm fine with the grace. Because that's what Jesus will do. I know that he loves those people. I it, Honestly, it's very difficult for me to say that. But I know Jesus loves those terrorists. He hates what they did and what they are doing. But he, may God be gracious to their souls. I've, I've just been praying for scales to fall off everybody's eyes who, who is refusing to see the truth. My son, who's in eighth grade, has a friend who has told him that the Jewish people are making everything up, that nothing really could happen on that day. And so I was like, <laughs> if you listen, if you get combative, and 
if he stay uncombative in speak truth and kindness, then he won't have a reason to continue to stay mad. So I've just been praying in my own life whenever we come in contact with anyone that we just we continue to to speak truth and kindness and reach out and just say, I will still be your friend. Limits of lies. And then I just pray for everybody to see the truth. And now think of think of what's going on with the I need to mention that as well. What's going on with the Jewish community worldwide? We're in danger. Seriously. Jewish uh, Israelis or Jewish community worldwide never called for to attack Arabs or Palestinians anywhere in the world. There was never this call, but there are many calls to attack Jewish people. And we are a minority. We used to have Israel, or consider Israel as a refugee, we have we are in trouble. Now it's not. We actually trapped. We feel this way as Jewish people. And my please pray for God's protection for the Jewish people, even in the United States and in other countries. And also, what I would encourage you to do, what I did in my uh, like open letter uh, to Christians in, in Germany that was widely publicized there, if you know Jewish people, try to comfort them in the world. Even in the United States or in other countries or in Israel, wherever you know them, tell them, I believe in Jesus. And I love you. I believe in Jesus, and I uh, I determined to be with you and pro uh, protect you. Even here in the United States, please do that because we need it. I just I'm receiving sometimes messages like that from my from other pastors or people I know. It bless my heart. It gives me some courage. But at the same time, the main encouragement is to be found in mutual. The Jewish tradition says, and it's actually biblical, it will get much worse before it will get better. But it will get better. Because the Messiah of Israel, the greatest Jew who ever lived on this earth, he is coming back. Certainly. For sure. Hopefully soon. Praise God. Amen. Enjoy the rest of the day. If any questions, come. Thank you.